All right guys, what's going on? This is Donald Russell here with DRP Fitness and Health. And today we're gonna to be talking about changing directions for youth athletes. So we're gonna jump right into it. The main thing we're gonna focus on right here is body control. That should be the number one component that you're trying to focus on. Regardless of the athlete that comes in, whatever level you're on, whether you're high school, college, pro, we're going to focus on that body control. That's one of the biggest components when it comes to changing directions, all right? So we're gonna talk about a few drills. So now when we come in, we always want to assess and see where the athlete is. And when I'm talking about change of directions, I'm really trying to make sure they understand the difference between how well can we control our body, whether we're planting off that outside foot or focusing a little bit more on that inside foot. Three essential drills that I love to do when we first start off is a landing mechanics where I have anywhere from a four to six inch hurdle. I have them doing a couple just bunny hops, jumping over, landing on two feet, landing on the balls of our feet while trying to maintain that athletic position. What I mean by that, feet are, are shoulder width apart, shoulders are back, chest is up. We're really trying to show that control. Anytime we lean too far forward, you'll see a lot of athletes, they'll like to stumble. And we wanna to try to maintain and control that while we're mid air and understand what that feels like. So when we do land or, we, or when we're in a position to where we have to change directions or decelerate to uh, accelerate we want to make sure that we're in the best position possible and that's going to be huge for us so we'll go over some four lateral jumps too as well and we'll go from double to single leg sometimes i do a lot of jump and rotational movements with landing i don't do it as often but if we need to if i need to assess that that is something that i add in one of my other favorite drills i love to do is we do a side shuffle to a change of direction, which we're focusing more on that inside leg. So we can go anywhere from a single leg side shuffle where we're leaning on that inside leg, going back into the uh, opposite direction that we wanna go. Or we can do that double leg shuffle where it's just quick, but we're teaching them how to have that lean to understand, hey, this is what your body needs to do to go back into the opposite direction. And with that drill in particular, you will also see how it correlates to what we're doing right here couple drills so those are just stationary movements that we like to focus on very small one to two steps where we really just kind of focusing on that body position making sure they understand when you change the direction it's all about the body positioning first that body control then the movement comes so when we jump into the movement when I'm talking about some of my young guys my young girls we're focusing more on some smaller cones quick steps and what I love to do quick two steps in between each cone and we land just on a single leg or a double leg just depending on what we're trying to focus on for the day but we're going to talk about a single leg first so when i'm going through two steps one two one two one two i really want them to understand when we put that weight on that outside foot control yourself on that outside foot a lot of faults that'll come is when they come across and you will see the kids kind of stumble that means at some point of the drill did not understand where their body position needs to be which is why when we first start all about body positioning first then go to movement the reason we do the body position first because it translates to what we're going to do for the movement so while we're here we're talking about that single leg control yourself on that outside foot even if we're going with the double leg same concept one two now i have my foot still on that outside leg and i'm pushing back in what we don't want to have is that triple step. One, two, three. And then we try to use that third step to actually push out. That means our body position was not in the, in the right position when we first started. So now we have to make up with an extra step. Extra step means we lose a step. Simple. All right, now within this same drill, we started getting into where can we change directions at different levels? That's the whole purpose of this drill. For my younger athletes, this is a great drill because we're trying to work on that foundation. We're trying to teach them from the ground up. So from here, I'm working that change of directions at different levels. I have the first cone, I'm right over, and I'm back. I'm always coming back to the starting position. Then I work myself to the second cone, and I'm back here. Then I work myself to that third cone, I'm back here. Then the last one, here, all right? And what that teaches us, at different levels, you're gonna see different styles or different feelings of where your body position should be. From here to here, I have to be extremely low and I have to almost have what we talked about in that body position assessment. I have to have that lean 
to the side so I can get back over that first cone. Now the second, third cone and the fourth cone, those I don't have to be as low, but my timing needs to be perfect of where my body position should be because now I'm moving with speed. I'm moving a little bit more speed. This second one may be the easiest, but I still have to focus on a little bit more of that body position. That third one may be the hardest because now I picked up speed. So as I'm getting closer to that cone, I need to start the lean process. Or I need to understand when I get to that third cone, I need to be in the best position possible to put that weight on that outside foot and go back into the direction that I just came from, which is huge when it comes to changing direction. All right, now, and lastly for this drill in particular, we focus on now working our way from the last cone to the first cone. Again, we're still trying to focus on changing direction, body positioning at different levels. So now we just came from the first to the back. Now we start at the last one, all the way back to the first one. And we start to work our way down from the third one, all the way back. Now for this drill in particular, remember when we first did the, when we did the first drill, it was over the first one and back. So now we have to focus on body positioning first. This one we woke up reworking on trying to control ourselves with speed to body position. And as we work our way down, we get to the second one. Now we have to understand we're coming from that speed. So now we have to slow down a little bit and put ourselves in the best body position possible. And the hardest one is always the first one because now you don't have to go as fast. You just need to be in the best position possible to get back over the cone, which is extremely hard. And if you have a habit of not being able to control yourself or putting yourself out of uh, good positions when you're trying to change direction, that's what's gonna be hard for you. Okay, now lastly, with a hurdle drill, it's gonna be the same concept as these cone drills, same positioning, same steps. The only difference is now we have six inch hurdles, which gives us a chance to give us a chance to over-exaggerate the knee lift or the hip flexion of getting over a hurdle. And I do this for more so of my older athletes going into, you know, later in their high school years, college, professional, even if I have some young athletes who are a little bit more advanced, they understand their movement and their body control. This is kind of where I challenge them. And I think this is great for any athletes who are tall for their particular sport and athletes who are extremely fast or extremely quick, but they're a little bit out of control or they move a little bit too fast for them to actually control their own mechanics. These drills are where, where it becomes to where we can help you kind of break those bad habits. Now we have the same concept, the two steps all the way through and really just trying to overemphasize lifting that knee, but we're still getting that quickness going between each drill and, and still trying to control ourselves at this beginning stage. We can also bring in a lot of movements on the outside of these hurdles, which is why I love this setup, because we can even go from a back side shuffle to where when we get to this end, we still have to have that same mechanics of planting on that outside foot, then getting back in to control it. Rather it's the single leg or the double leg. Neither one of them doesn't matter. Long as we're still working on those components like we talked body positioning, body control, then we focus on movement. That's why these drills are so essential and that's why I think these drills can help you a lot to your sport in particular and can give you a better advantage as everybody else on the field or on the court.